pictured, bumbled date of dead Connecticut woman. The older white man who said he found his 23-year-old bumble date dead on her bloodstained sheets after a night of drinking has been revealed as a 37-year-old design engineer who she had known for three days. The family of Lauren Smithfields are now suing police and calling for an independent investigation into her death. She died on December 12 at her apartment in Bridgeport, Connecticut where she and Matthew Law Fountain had spent the night drinking. Her cause of death is not known. La Fountain works as a design engineer at Connecticut-based Times Microwave System, a company which manufactures cables for the military, aerospace and telecommunications companies. He has not been named by police as a suspect in relation to Smithfield's death. Multiple attempts by DailyMail.com to reach La Fountain were unsuccessful. Smithfield's, a student at Norwalk Community College, and La Fountain were hanging out and drinking the night before she died according to a The Police report obtained by DailyMail.com. Law Fountain claims that at one point during the evening, Smithfields became ill and threw up in her bathroom before the two continued drinking tequila mixed drinks. Her brother, Lakeem Jetter, told Rolling Stone that a large blood stain was found on her bed and he claimed that several other pieces of key evidence, including a used condom, lubricant and an unidentified pill, were ignored by cops. The first night we saw cops there, flipped plates and the lube. The cops didn't take any of the cups to test the liquor, Jetter said. There was a big stain of blood in the middle of her bed, with streaks going to the right side. Smithfield's family is now suing Bridgeport police after becoming frustrated with how they are handling the case, attorney Darnell Crossland told DailyMail.com, alleging the detective in charge of her case told them to stop contacting him. Crossland also said that the detective was uninterested in pursuing Smithfield's date as a suspect. DailyMail.com has contacted Bridgeport Police for comment. In a statement issued last month, Acting Police Chief Rebecca Garcia said the department takes these concerns very seriously. Police are still investigating her death and the case is still active. However five weeks on, the family are yet to be told the cause of death. They are waiting for the autopsy before questioning anyone, Crossland told DailyMail.com. But there are parts of the investigation that can be done without the autopsy they can obtain the messages from Bumble. But that's not being done. The police report obtained by DailyMail.com revealed that Smithfields asked Law Fountain for $40 to get her nails done and then to meet her at her residence where the pair reportedly took shots of tequila. Law Fountain claims Smithfields became ill and threw up in her bathroom before the two continued drinking tequila mixed drinks. They reportedly played games, ate food and began watching a movie when Smithfields allegedly received a text went outside to get something from her brother and then, upon her return, went into her bathroom for 10 to 15 minutes. Her date told police he thought it was odd, but didn't feel it was his place to say anything as he didn't know her that well, the incident report reportedly reads. Afterwards, the pair continued to watch the movie and finished the bottle of tequila before she fell asleep on the couch. La Fountain allegedly carried her to her bedroom and the two went to bed. He claims he woke up around 3 a.m. to use the bathroom and found Smithfield snoring. Then, around 6.30 a.m. he reportedly found her lying on her right side with blood coming out of her right nostril and not breathing. He then called 911. Once police arrived on scene, Smithfield's a landlord was contacted. The landlord did not have family contact information so it wasn't until days later when Shanta Fields visited the unit that she learned her daughter had died. When I asked the officer about the guy, he said he was a very nice guy and they weren't looking into him anymore. It was almost like he was sticking up for him and it seemed weird to hear that from a detective, her brother Lakeem Jetter told NBC Connecticut. He told me directly on the phone to stop calling him and hung up in my face, it was just like total disrespect, like that's what you tell a family that's going through grief and trying to find answers? Jetter also alleged police were not thorough in their initial crime scene investigation. Noting that while officers confiscated her phone, passport and $1,345 in cash, they neglected to collect other pieces of potential evidence. He told Rolling Stone they found a used condom in the trash, lubricant, bloody sheets on her bed and an unidentified pill in the unit. The first night we saw cups there, flipped plates and the lube. The cops didn't take any of the cups to test the liquor, said Jetter. There was a big stain of blood in the middle of her bed, with streaks going to the right side. Smithfield's mother also claims the officers made her feel as if the investigation was not important. The way they talked to me, the way they have talked to the family, how they treated my daughter, they treated her like she was nobody, like she was not important, 
Shanta Smith told the TV station. The family's attorney alleged police often don't prioritize investigation involving black women. We have seen the amount of resources that have gone to other cases involving missing white women like Gabby Batito and we know so many black women are missing so much in this country, attorney Darnell Crossland said. Everyone is speaking out, everyone is insulted with the way the Bridgeport Police and the Bridgeport City has dealt with us. The family plans to serve notice of an intention to sue to the city of Bridgeport and intends to make a formal announcement on Sunday. They also plan to hire a private investigator to look into the case. Meantime, they have paid for an independent autopsy of Smithfield's body. I haven't texted my sister since December 4, Jetter said, noting that he did call Smithfield's on the night of December 11 to bring out a basket of clothes he was picking up. I didn't know that anybody was in there. She came out and she was out there for like 10-15 minutes and she walked back into the house. She looked normal. She didn't look sick, she didn't look tired, she didn't look drunk. I'm her second older brother, if I would have seen her drunk I would have said what are you doing? Why do you look like that? Her mother also claims that Smith Fields had gotten her nails done earlier that week and that she wouldn't have needed to get them done again. Fields also noted that her nails were still so intact they didn't need to be done for her funeral. Crossland, who is representing Smithfield's family, said he is seeking justice for the deceased woman. We are suing the city of Bridgeport for failure to prosecute and failure to protect this family under the 14th Amendment, Crossland said. He is planning to evoke the portion of the Constitution that provides equal protection under the law for all citizens, including black people. It's happening all too often with black girls missing across this world, across this country, and no one says anything, the lawyer said. When a white woman goes missing, the whole world drops everything. We are done with this valuation. He added, we want an independent investigation by an independent state agency or federal agency to look into this case. We want the DOJ like when they have to step in for cases like a Mike Brown, this family has to continue to deal with the loss of their loved one, work and they shouldn't have to do that when they are hardworking taxpayers. Crossland claims Bridgeport police have issued their condolences but only after the case was brought to their attention by the media. We see them now offering their condolences after reporters have been asking them for questions and when we hear about it, it's like a slap in the face, we don't want excuses, we want answers, he said. I have no faith in the Bridgeport Police Department, we have been disrespected and they didn't handle our loved one's case like they should have as soon as this happened. Bridgeport Police released the following statement to NBC Connecticut last week. On December 12, 2021, the Bridgeport Emergency Operations Center received a call for service regarding an untimely death. Upon police arrival, it was found that, Smith Fields, passed away unexpectedly. This incident is currently being investigated by the Bridgeport Police Department's Detective Bureau. This investigation remains open and active. The Detective Bureau is awaiting the final report from the Chief Medical Examiner's Office for cause and manner of death of Ms. Smith Fields. The Bridgeport Police Department offers its sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Ms. Lauren Smith Fields. We encourage anyone with information regarding this incident to contact either Detective Sergeant Joseph Morales at 203-581-5219 or the Bridgeport Police Tips Line at 203-576-8477. Meanwhile, a makeshift memorial has been set up outside Smithfield's apartment and a GoFundMe established to help their family fund their private investigation. Fields and Jetter are also planning to hold a city-ride march on Sunday afternoon to raise awareness about the case and demand justice for their loved one. We want justice, we want answers, I mean whatever happened happened that night, we want to know and we want to feel like they care as much as we care, said Jetter. I never thought something like this would happen where you lose a family member and we are treated like you don't exist so we are going to ensure this city remembers Lauren Smith Fields. I miss my daughter and I see her and everything that I do and it pains me to know that I'll never get to see her again, echoed Fields.